You're listening to the Mind Over Finger podcast, episode number 170. Welcome to the Mind Over Finger podcast, discussions on mindful music making, efficient practice, optimal performance, and building a purposeful life and fulfilling career. I'm your host, violinist, and certified performance and life coach for musicians, Dr. René Paul Gauthier. Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing incredible as you're tuning into this episode. Today, we continue our exploration of the topic of mastery, and we're going to talk about something that all of us need to power the journey, energy. There's no need to explain to you how crucial having energy is in the pursuit of a goal of mastery in any field. Science shows that energy levels have a significant impact on our results, including our productivity, creativity, and overall well-being. But I'm not telling you anything you don't know. When our energy levels are low, we're more likely to feel tired, stressed, and unmotivated, and that makes it difficult to focus on tasks and achieving our goals, not surprisingly. On the other hand, as I'm sure you've experienced, when our energy levels are high, we are more likely to feel energized, focused, and motivated, and that helps us perform better and achieve better results. So we cannot skip this topic when talking about mastery. Having what's needed to sustain our effort is pretty basic knowledge, but it's one area that I hear time and time again that people neglect. My clients, my friends, my colleagues, and definitely myself. We all need the reminder to nurture the asset, to attend to our energy sources. So in today's episode, I'm bringing you this reminder, and I'm going to offer you some suggestions of things you can do to create a sustainable context and generate more energy for your journey to mastery. And not only in your musical journey, but in anything else that you're pursuing in life. So today, I hope it's very helpful and impactful for you. And before I jump in, I do want to remind you that the doors to the Music Mastery Experience are open. And if you're a musician who's feeling stuck, or maybe you're struggling to make progress, don't worry, you're not alone. I know firsthand how frustrating it can be to put in the hard work and not see the results you're hoping for. Maybe you're not quite where you want to be, but you just cannot seem to figure out how to make it happen. You need support managing your time and energy. You want guidance on how to maximize every minute you have when you're working on your instrument because you're already hustling and every minute is precious. Maybe you feel like you're so close to getting what it is that you want. You just need that extra push, that extra spark of inspiration. In short, if you're looking for help to finally feel like you are in control of your time, of your playing, and of your career— Visit mindoverfinger.com slash MME right now and book your free conversation with me so we can talk about how the Music Mastery Experience can help you achieve all of those goals and we can strategize to make it all happen. The Music Mastery Experience is the most comprehensive coaching program for musicians out there. I promise you there's nothing else like it. It's designed to help you achieve your goals faster and more effectively than ever before. From how you can learn faster and better, to managing your mind to create success you've never even allowed yourself to dream about, it's all there for you. So go to mindoverfinger.com slash MME right now and book your call. I cannot wait to hear from you, and I cannot wait to help you create the life and career you've always wanted. Again, that's mindoverfinger.com slash MME, and I will have that link in the show notes for you. Okay, let's talk energy. Let's fuel our most precious asset, ourselves. Energy comes to us in many ways and from different sources. And today I'm going to cover what is essentially three basic ones. Physical energy, mental and emotional energy, and intellectual energy. 
Let's start with the physical because that's the main source that fuels all of the others. Number one source, sleep. Everyone agrees on this. Scientists, researchers, studies after studies underline the importance of sleep. Sleeping has a ton of benefits for our bodies, our minds, and emotions. Lack of sleep, as maybe you've experienced, can lead to poor concentration, memory problems, and mood swings. Sounds familiar? Definitely for me. Physically, sleep helps repair and regenerate our muscles and organs, which can keep us from getting sick or injured, and it gets us operating optimally. Mentally, sleeping helps improve our focus, memory, and learning, which, as you can easily guess, makes us more productive and creative. And emotionally, sleep regulates the nervous system. It can help us feel more relaxed, happy, and refreshed, And all of this makes us better equipped to handle stress and challenges. So make sure you're catching enough Zs, my friends. Establish a regular sleep schedule, create a relaxing bedtime routine, and limit the use of electronic devices before bedtime. And don't forget to catch a nap if you can. Let's talk about rest and recovery. Make sure to give yourself time for rest and recovery after any activity that is taxing on your body and your mind, such as practice sessions, teaching, rehearsals, and performances. We all know what it's like when we drive ourselves to the ground, and resting after an intense burst of work is going to help us retain the information we learned during that activity, and it will regenerate our energy for the next activities. This is a powerful investment in your long-term efficiency. Now, exercise. Well, here again, there's a huge body of scientific evidence on how important exercise is. Exercise keeps the body strong. It reduces injuries. It improves endurance and stamina. And all of those things help us sustain long practice sessions and performances. Don't forget that we are athletes. We need to keep our body strong and working efficiently. Exercise is not just good for our physical health, but it also has a profound impact on our mental well-being as well. It helps reduce stress, it improves our focus, and it enhances our creativity, all of which are crucial for us to stay on top of our game. So make sure to keep some time to dedicate to some form of physical activity that works for you. I know for myself, walking, Lifting weights and practicing yoga are huge in keeping me injury-free, strong, and more balanced. Another thing I would recommend is experimenting with somatic practices like the Alexander Technique, Feldenkrais, body mapping, Pilates, breathwork, yoga, martial arts, etc. They're truly wonderful in helping us improve our physical and emotional well-being through mindful attention to the body. They can be extremely helpful in releasing tension, maximizing the efficiency of movements, and preventing injuries. So look into it, try some things, and consider developing a practice in one of these somatic approaches. I also personally find that moving when I'm feeling low energy is a fantastic way to change my state. I might feel like I need a nap. But going for a walk often does magic. And that's because moving our bodies increases blood flow, it boosts oxygen and nutrient delivery to our cells, and it releases endorphins, which are natural mood-boosting chemicals. So try moving a little next time you're inclined to reach for another cup of coffee or the couch, but you have some work to do. And I really like what George Leonard says about it in his book, Mastery, which, as you know, I love. He says, often the best remedy for physical awareness is 30 minutes of aerobic exercise. In the same way, mental and spiritual lassitude is often cured by decisive action or the clear intention to act. And that's definitely a quote I keep nearby and I keep in mind, and I have found it to be true time and time again in my own experience. Okay, let's talk nutrition. To excel and pursue mastery. Proper nutrition is, I think, just as important as regular exercise. Eating a balanced diet provides your body with the nutrients it needs to function at its best and to maintain energy levels throughout the day. 
when you fuel your body with the right foods, you can improve your energy levels, your cognitive function, and your overall health. Plus, eating well can help you avoid getting sick or injured, which is crucial for staying on track with your goals. So make sure you're fueling your body with high quality foods that support your physical and mental health if you want to achieve greatness. I'm not going to make suggestions on what you should eat here today because that is such a personal choice, but I highly recommend enlisting the help of a nutritionist to help you come up with a nutrition plan that truly works for you and your needs. So these are the three basic sources of physical energy. Let's now turn our attention to mental and emotional energy. This is not always something people take a lot of time to think about, how to craft a mental and emotional health plan, but I highly recommend it. Get to know yourself and understand the things that fuel you mentally and emotionally, the things that fuel your soul, the things that bring more peace and balance in your life. What would help you maintain a positive mindset? What would fuel your motivation? What would help you when you're facing challenges? So reflect on what those things are for you and make room in your life for them. Seek help, therapy, coaching, finding a mentor or a great teacher. Guidance and support are absolute game changers in that respect. Spend time with loved ones or schedule time for a hobby that truly makes you happy. Take a walk in nature. Or why not actually pick up your instrument and play the things that you truly want in exactly the way that you want? That is also allowed, you know? So reconnect with your love of music by treating yourself in your own practice. Like keep the play in playing. Experiment with modalities and spiritual practices that support you. Prayer, meditation, journaling. And don't forget those somatic practices I mentioned earlier. For me, my meditation and gratitude practice is an absolute must. It impacts my life in positive ways that I can't even begin to explain. So find those practices that work for you and make time for them. Also, be very intentional about cultivating a positive mindset. This is truly going to lift you up and help you stay motivated, help you overcome challenges, and achieve your goals. Surround yourself with positive influences. Read books. Listen to podcasts. Visualize. Making space for your mental and emotional health will powerfully impact your energy levels. Don't forget that. Now to the last category, intellectual energy. Maybe that sounds funny to you and you're wondering where I'm going with this, but think for a second about the way you feel when you're truly engrossed in something that is interesting or stimulating for you, right? Now you know what I'm talking about. Intellectual activities have a great way to stimulate the mind, to boost our moods, and to increase our motivation. They can make us feel energized in so many ways. They provide that mental stimulation that I just mentioned. They challenge our brains and they keep us mentally engaged. All of this helps us feel more alert and focused. They also give us a sense of accomplishment. When we learn a new skill or we solve a challenging problem, we can experience a sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. This is a huge boost to our mood and energy levels. They fuel our curiosity and our motivation to learn and explore new things. They're also a great way to connect with others, to provide us with those social connections and interactions that are so inspiring. This gives us a sense of belonging and support, and it can help increase our energy levels and our sense of well-being. So what's interesting or stimulating for you? There's so many things you can try. Read, whether it's a novel, a biography, or self-help book. Or learn a new language. It can be challenging, but it can be incredibly rewarding and energizing as well. And as a bonus, it can help enhance your cognitive function and improve your communication skills. 
Pick a new hobby that's completely different than anything you've done before. Or maybe give yourself permission to finally start one that you've been dreaming about for a while but never took action on. Go to a concert. Or attend a lecture or a workshop. Going to events like this provide opportunities for intellectual stimulation and social connection with like-minded individuals. So, I don't know, but that sounds fun to me. Write. Creative writing or journaling is not just good for the brain. It's also therapeutic and it can help us process emotions and improve our mental clarity. Decide to learn more about the repertoire you're working on. Seek historical information. Look into the theory and analysis. Compare with repertoire from the same composers in the same era. This is going to help you get a wider understanding of the work and help you at every level of your interpretation, how you're going to play it technically, and how you're going to express your message with this piece. So anything is possible. Get creative, experiment, and have fun. Fueling and maintaining our energy levels involves many things, and it can look like anything. Today, I lightly covered physical energy, emotional energy, and intellectual energy, but this is a big topic, and there's so much more that could be said. But I think the main message I have for you today is to pause, tune in, and take a look at how you feel and the ways you could nurture yourself and nurture your energy. So I encourage you to think about it and try stuff. And there's a couple more things I'd like to mention before I let you go. The first one is the concept of balance. Seeking balance is important to avoid overloading our schedules. Setting priorities and creating schedules is essential for managing our time effectively. But I think we need to let go of that idea that a perfect balance is possible. It's not. Yes, Set priorities, create a schedule, try to stick to it, try to create balance in your life, and prioritize sustainability. But give yourself a lot of flexibility as well. At time, you might find yourself in the middle of the longest marathon. There might be sprint periods. There are times when we push our limits a little bit. And that's okay. As long as we're intentional about it, And we remember that rest and recovery must also be part of the equation. So don't forget to monitor your energy. And let's talk also about how all of this comes together in managing our energy around practicing and performing. Not surprisingly, it's helpful if we are in an optimal state physically, emotionally, and intellectually to practice or perform. So I would invite you to go back and listen to previous episodes of the podcast. I have so many episodes on so many topics that can help you manage your energy from all of those angles. I discuss how to plan, how to prime or prepare for practice, how to organize your sessions, how to prepare for performances, how to manage your mind. I talk about practice from superpowers, how to record yourself efficiently, how to practice efficiently, how to prepare for lessons, how to stay motivated. You name it, I probably have a podcast episode for it. So what I recommend is that you just go back, look at past episode titles, and pick one on the topic that could help you that day. And keep in mind that having awareness surrounding your work before, during, and how you recover after so you can maximize everything you do in the practice room will profoundly impact your results. I'll say it one more time. Physical, emotional, and intellectual energy management serves you. So this week, think about the ways you will nurture your physical, emotional, and intellectual energy sources and ask yourself, How do I feel right now? What do I need right now? What would help me feel more energized right now? And what would sustain me in the long term? All right, this is what I have for you today. I hope this is helpful, my friends. And don't forget to go to mindoverfinger.com slash MME right now and book your call with me to explore the many ways the Music Mastery Experience can support you, energize you, and uplift you to accomplish all of your goals. Much love going your way, and à bientôt!
Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Mind Over Finger podcast. If this content was helpful for you, please share with everyone you think could benefit from it. Take a screenshot, share on social media, and tag me. I'm Mind Over Finger everywhere. So reach out, send me a DM, and let me know how this content helped you. Let's keep the conversation going. As always, I have all the information related to this episode in the show notes. You can find them via your podcast app or by visiting mindoverfinger.com, where you can also find more free resources on efficient practice and performance preparation, links to sign up to my free workshops, and information on how to work with me. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter to receive your free guide to a productive mindful practice transcripts from the Mind Over Finger podcast episodes delivered to your inbox every week, and more. Also, join the Mind Over Finger Facebook community, my private group, for access to my live videos and to exchange with a community of like-minded musicians. So make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. And if you have specific questions for me or my guests that you would like answered in an episode, share them with me using the link in the show notes or send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook. That's it for today. Again, thank you and à bientôt.